Hello everyone! Today I have here a very special device, a helmet mountable thermal camera module that is not made for private use, it's made for fire departments, emergency services and rescue operations departments to save life faster and more efficient than ever with some insane clever functions. Made by Purple River Electronic, a company based in China, very ambitious and very innovative company. I will leave all the company information down in the description about them with contact information, everything, so if by the end of the video uh, this cool gadget gets your attention and you want to do business with them, you can get there easy. Let's start with the basic specifications, try to stay with me because I will put a lot of useful details and information about this and that would be hard to find on your own. So let's see. There is three different models available, but let's focus on this one, the 256 by 192 resolution model. I'm going to highlight the most important and relevant specifications but if you want to see the entire specification list, you can pause the video and you can read it completely. This model has a 55 degree field of view and that of course enables you to see much more at once, but at the cost of the um, details on the same sensor size. So if I put next to each other two identical of these devices with the exact same sensor, but just different lens, one lens is giving 55 degree, the other lens is giving for example 20 degree, then with the 55 degree you will see a wider range with less details and with the other with the 20 degree field of view you will see less field of view but that comes with more details but in case of a device like this um, the details are not so important the most important is to see more at once so you can detect uh, heat spots heat sources it has a detecting range of 5 to 25 meter but of course you can see before this and after that uh, range as well very well Moving down to the optical sensor part, uh, it has a 1 by 2.8 inch uh, high performance CMOS sensor. It's a very, very nice low light sensor with a full HD resolution. And if you look at its performance in low illuminated uh, environments, you can see it's a very, very serious sensor. And the other two very important detail to mention is the temperature range, which is minus 20 to plus 550 Celsius with an accuracy of, of plus 2 Celsius, I mean plus or minus 2 Celsius. Now I'm going to put the complete specifications on the screen, so if you want you can pause the video and read it in complete details. So now after the basic specifications, let's take a look at the main features. On the inner side we find the installation rail, this goes basically over the helmet and the side of the helmet and the screen goes down front of the eyes from the eye of the wearer so you have basically like a floating screen in front of you one more thing about this mounting solution if you for example don't know um, in my case also i don't have the helmet for example that have this type of mounting solution and i don't even have that mounting solution to adapt it on a helmet right now but uh, you can, if you're not familiar with this, you can order the helmets themselves or the mounting part for the helmets you can order directly from the uh, manufacturer of this uh, device. On the front we find the thermal sensor, a half watt LED light. And the full HD camera. Uh, with a 6mm lens and basically the low illumination capable so it can also record in low illumination with infrared. On the side we will find the SOS button that also serves with a single press uh, as a turning on the light uh, or with a long 5 second press it's going to send an SOS message uh, with the GPS location uh, to the backend software so the backend person can communicate uh, live uh, with the camera. We have the power button, the menu down, menu up and the menu select button. Under this mesh we will find basically the gas sensors. This gas sensor is capable of detecting carbon monoxide, methane and measuring the oxygen level real time. If there is an excess level of carbon monoxide or methane uh, it immediately triggers an alarm and sends it to the backend software so the uh, dispatch can see what's going on. On the bottom of the device we will find under this rubber ceiling we find the headphone jack. Under this other 
uh, rubber seal. We can find the USB-C port. This is only charging port, no data port unfortunately. And we can find the SIM card and memory card tray. So let's remove the SIM card tray, just like a mobile phone. It accepts a 4G SIM card for data and an SD card for recording the video. Works in any country, so you're not going to have problem. In case if there is any special requirement for um, your own country, you can talk with the uh, manufacturer and they will help you resolve all kind of problems. Any problems, basically, you can have. The battery is removable. First, you have to take out this uh, screw that secures the battery. It's a very good feature. You will not lose the battery. Then just pull out the battery and you have it there. The cool thing about this battery pack is basically you can charge it without being inside the device. As you can see, it's already charging. Uh, it features a USB-C port. It can do the charging for you. Also, you can charge it uh, while the battery is inside the device. You can charge it via this USB-C port over here. So when you plug it in, just connect your USB-C cable and it will appear on the screen. The battery life can last uh, for about uh, five and a half, five, six hours approximately. Depends on what type of uh, battery is inside the pack. If your country have uh, battery um, import limitations, then you can also order this. Just the battery case itself. And with a simple soldering, uh, you can adapt two times, two piece of uh, 18650 batteries inside. Uh, with a very simple soldering, uh, you can make them ready to, to work. So the manufacturer only have to send you the device and the battery casing itself and you locally can purchase and obtain the 18650 type batteries. And on top of this, as I mentioned, this also features uh, GPS. It also features Bluetooth 5 and Wi-Fi 6. On the SD card, the recording file format from pictures is uh, JPEG and MP4 for the videos. It can support SD card uh, of 256GB uh, in FAT32 file system. The operation system is based on Linux. Let's turn this on. It's a nice TFT LCD, 4 inch, uh, with a resolution of 800 by 480. Let's go into the menu. As you can see, video stream, uh, choosing the colors, gain, settings and about the device. You can capture a picture, video capture, you can choose how it does. Now let's run through the uh, color palette. Basically with the backend software you are streaming this uh, into a person sitting behind a computer. Uh, with that software you can, con you can connect multiple of these devices, so basically the whole team of the whole rescue team can have each one of these on their helmets and searching for survivals um, in cloudy or, or, or a place with full of smoke. Because you can see because with the naked eyes or with anything you cannot see through the smoke, but with the thermal camera you can see through the smoke, so you can see if someone is laying on the floor, if it's a big area, forest fire for example. Um, obviously if the heat is too high you cannot see the living person, but if there is just smoke and you're finding lost persons, you will easily find anyone. Now inside the settings menu for example, we will see, we will see uh, system settings, net parameters, gas sensor, temperature settings. Uh, temperature settings for example, you can set up which will be the highest temperature uh, that will trigger the alarm for example. So if you see on the screen a higher temperature than it should be, it will alert you. Inside the system settings you can see Wi-Fi settings, uh, Bluetooth settings, uh, language settings. Um, the language for example, this one is in English and Chinese, but the uh, manufacturer can configure you to any language you desire. As you can see the oxygen level right now is 18%, no carbon monoxide and no methane present in here. In the corner here you can see the battery indicator, Wi-Fi, uh, GPS status and that is that I am connected right now to a backend software. So 
Let's take a look at the backend software and let's see uh, how does it work. So, let's see. In the left side you can see the Android version of the app and on the right side you can see the PC version of the app. Uh, both streaming simultaneously and on the PC app, uh, I think on the Android app as well, both you can stream uh, 36 you devices what? simultaneously. But only 36 devices if you only choose to stream either the uh, visible image or the thermal image because normally you stream both of them simultaneously, mm, that would make it 18 devices normally. As I'm going around here you can see it's picking up nice and clear and with high details every tiny little heat source. Uh, those uh, electronics are not hot but you can see them clearly. You can see the thermal and visible image is exactly the same uh, aspect ratio. So I would like to see in the future maybe a, a thermal image overlay on top of the visible image option but most likely it will be implemented sooner or later. Now it's night time already. Um, now as I'm looking outside in the window you can see my phone is struggling to uh, amplify the ambient light um, but the um, visible light camera of the device itself is turning it into almost some daytime. So it's an extremely good low light uh, camera. It's very very nice. As I keep looking around, you can see the sky. Um, the sky is, is nighttime, and uh, when I turn it to the sky, this camera makes it look like it's daytime. The hotspot tracking is also doing its job very well, so if, it's, if there is a fire in any of the buildings, any of the house, um, it will point, point it out for you immediately where it is. But of course it's most effective uh, if you set up the high temperature alarm. And now I'm going to leave it here for a minute, um, so you can analyze the video quality, the recording quality, how does it look like outside. Now let's see the fire alarm test. Um, if you set it up for a certain temperature range, uh, if, it, if it sees that temperature range anywhere, uh, it's going to trigger an alarm. So basically you can set it up for 200, 100 Celsius if you want and it will trigger any um, fire stores, for example, during an operation. So let's see. As you can see, it automatically immediately triggers the, the alarm. Now if you take a closer look, you can see the uh, oxygen level in the environment, the carbon monoxide and the methane level. Now I don't have enough propane gas burning source here um, to trigger the carbon monoxide alert but I have an idea for the methane. Methane gas is produced in the human body by microorganisms called methanogens. So whenever you eat too much uh, carbon hydrates, the unabsorbed carbon hydrate will be fermented by the methanogens releasing hydrogen and methane. The methane and hydrogen then will be absorbed in the bloodstream and exhaled through the lungs. And that's how the methane alarm will be tested. So I'm going to blow some air inside this mesh, uh, under this mesh hiding the gas sensor. So let's see what happens. Okay. 
took me a few attempts to trigger that alarm. Uh, that just means my digestive system is just fine. So now, if I scroll down in the list of alarms, you can see all the uh, previous high temperature alarms, and you can see there the methane gas was 406 parts per million. I don't know if it's a lot or not, but it triggered, so it works. Now, there is not so many other things, because the software is uh, very simple and very easy to use. Um, other than, for example, I can mention the maps, um, where you can where the dispatch can track you, um, where are you at, or when you enter to a cave or, or a building where there is no GPS coverage, so they cannot track you, they know where, did, where was your last location. Now a few words to mention about the Android app. Uh, there is also a lot of uh, options and possibilities you can record, capture, and there is a button called Call. With that call, you can basically the dispatch can call the device itself and you can talk with a Bluetooth microphone or a um, wired microphone. You can talk directly uh, to the firefighter or the person who's using it. And there is a lot of other options uh, inside the menu. You can check the previous alarms as well there as well. You can see there was my gas alarm test and the fire tests with the exact dates and temperatures and quantities of gases, so everything is very nice and detailed. A few more things to mention about the software. Inside the equipment uh, information menu you can find all kind of uh, networking informations. Some of them you can change. For example, you can change the um, measuring um, alarm triggering uh, limits, for example, for gas and oxygen and all kind of uh, temperature uh, related things minimum maximum temperature alarms and there is also the call button that can also enable you from the uh, computer uh, for example that the dispatch can call the device itself in case of need any communication directly uh, during this test i couldn't try this because my networking settings um, didn't allow me for for some reason that the call works but it works and the um, manufacturer also can help you in case of any problem to troubleshoot so overall, this is a massively useful tool that I can recommend and advise to any fire department or rescue services, durable, and can improve the number of saved lives um, in those critical situations. About the price, you have to consult the manufacturer, but I don't think saved lives has a price tag. As I mentioned before, all link and contact details will be in the description, so you can contact the manufacturer for more info. Hope you like this video. If you do, a subscribe would be really helpful. See you in the next one.